UK. So our first joint speakers, we have Venerable Dr. Tenzin Dadon and Venerable Dr. Karma Tashi Chodron. So there's been a slight change in the schedule, but we'll start with uh, the Venerables. Um, so Venerable Dr. Tenzin Dadon is a Bhutanese nun of 25 years standing. Um, and uh, Venerable Karma Tashi Chodron is a Malaysian nun in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Um, and today they will be talking um, on the topic of silent no more, critical review of sexual exploitation in Buddhist practice. So I welcome you both to the stage. Thank you. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you, and thank you for having me here. So, Venerable Dr. Karmatashi Chudan and uh, my paper is on the silent, no more, critical review of sexual exploitations in Buddhist practice, a monastic perspective. So, it is not uncommon to hear of the struggles of Buddhist practitioners before they encountered the Dharma. Yeshi Sogil, for example, was sexually abused by her suitor and exploited by several other men. The situation seems to have reversed in the 21st century, whereby more and more women and even men were sexually exploited after coming into the Buddhist fold. Bhutan has its fair share of incidences of sexual abuse of nuns. We can narrate the story of a 76-year-old ex-nun who was a nun until the age 19 when she was raped by a monk and left pregnant. This demonstrates how nuns suffer tremendously after being raped, having to disrobe because the vows of celibacy have been broken, although sexual intercourse was unintentional on the part of the nuns. And recently, when I was in uh, Nepal attending the uh, teaching, I heard the same story that one nun was raped by four men and then later she was expelled by the monastery and as well as the community, even though it is not her fault. The objective and intention of this paper is a critical analysis of the taboo subject of sexual harassment in the religious realm based on a doctoral dissertation on the nuns in two nunneries in Bhutan. The primary purpose of this paper is to pave the way for a meaningful discussion on the rising incidence of sexual abuse in religious institutions in hope of finding effective and long-lasting solutions to the serious issue. The disclaimers are the authors have no intention to discredit any individual institution or country. Teachers are held in very high esteem in Vajrayana Buddhism because of the heavy emphasis on the guru-disciple relationship. Yet some demonstrate inappropriate behavior towards their students. One incident involved a monk teacher in a nunnery having illicit sexual relations with his students. Senior nuns and some lay people interviewed reported that the teenage nuns were sexually exploited by the teacher's friend as, friends as well. Lacking secular and monastic education especially, which includes subjects such as moral ethics and monastic precepts, which is Vinaya, nuns are open target for sexual abuse. Several incidences of sexual abuse and clandestine relationships during this study. Two years later, there was a case at another nunnery whereby a monk impregnated a young nun, cleverly asked her to leave the nunnery and then followed suit not long after. These incidents demonstrate that some monk teachers who should be teaching Dharma to the nuns and be beacons of morality are the ones who take advantage of those nuns. It is not fully clear if the sexual acts were consensual, but the fact that monks and nuns have to observe vows of celibacy is taken very lightly by monks and nuns in Bhutan. Just a quick fact that 90% of children who were sexually abused know the abusers. One of the gravi uh, gravest danger in placing male teachers at nunneries is the scope for sexual abuse. Nuns dare not go against their teachers' wishes, paving the way for sexual exploitation by unscrupulous 
monks, many of whom are teachers and sometimes even directors of nunneries. As Gatschu observed in the Zanskari context, even if the teachers contributed little or nothing to the nuns' education, nuns education they expected and received assistance in countless tedious tasks at all at no cost. The potential for abuse, especially in the case of younger monks or those with illicit intentions, need hardly to be spelled out. When a, nun, when a nun complained to the nunnery director, also a monk, instead of investigation, investigating the matter and punishing the monk teacher, the whistleblower nun was expelled for fear of exposing each other and to cover up the matter. Monastic authorities tend to protect the interests of monks than nuns. The a Buddhist scenario is not much different as God's choose uh, Sanskari nuns. There have been cases whereby a nun is expelled from the nunnery and forced to disrobe, as the common assumption is that the victim has broken the basic vows of celibacy, therefore she can no longer continue to live as a nun, as I just mentioned in Nepal. She is also expelled from the community. She can't even live in the community now. This should not be so as the Vinaya is not so cruel and deals with rape in a compassionate way, allowing the nun who is the victim, not the perpetrator, to continue her spiritual path, as uh, Sujatu uh, quotes. According to the Mulasarvastivada Vinaya, also cited in Sujatu, if she is forced, then if she does not feel pleasure in the three times, that is when entering, staying, or leaving, there is no offense. The offender is to be expelled. Many incidences of sexual violations are a result of brainwashing by monk teachers citing sexual relations with the guru as being in accordance with Kama Mudra, the Legi Chakya in Tibetan. Moreover, most nuns hail from rural areas with minimum schooling, lack of exposure to secular legislation, and are clueless about what to do in the event of rape. There is neither an awareness raising on sexual harassment nor a corresponding grievance mechanism in the two nunnery studies studied. The tantric seal, as uh, Kama Mudra in Sanskrit and Legi Chakja in Tibetan, is the consort practice which is said to be a speedy method to induce very subtle states of mind which accelerate, accelerates the practitioner's direct realization of the nature of mind. The Kama Mutra is strictly reserved for advanced tantric practitioners who have obtained the consent of their gurus to engage in such practices, not to be interpreted as ordinary sexual activity, but a practice which requires extraordinary restraint and mindfulness. Without the necessary authorization, the tantric seal practice can be extremely dangerous and a result in the practitioner straying off the path and ending up in the lower realms. The majority of nuns interviewed said that nuns should not violate their vows of celibacy to become spiritual consort, because instead of leading to enlightenment, it would instead lead to hell and give rise to numerous obstacles and problems in one's spiritual practice. However, the young nuns do not seem to mind. One young nun confidently asserts, I will accept the offer without any hesitation as the practitioner is higher and can lead us to enlightenment. I too have experienced unwelcome advance of monks who tried to coerce me into becoming a tantric consort, citing mutual benefit since I would be helping them to attain enlightenment, in turn lift me up spiritually, a prospect I found repulsive to say the least. Fortunately, I'm well aware of the criteria of tantric uh, consort practice and know that it is forbidden for monks and nuns. Secondly, one has to receive the three recognitions from the one's guru, who is usually a highly realized master, before one is allowed to take a consort. If only the nuns knew the exact criteria and conditions for the Kama Mudra and had access to the Vinaya, incidences of sexual exploitation would have been nipped in the bud. This is why 
women, both lay and monastic, need to be fully empowered in Buddhist education. Buddhist institution needs to pay immediate attention to the growing incidence of sexual abuse. In the case of Bhutan, the government, through the Dasang Renso, the monastic body, must provide the nuns with a sexual harassment grievance mechanism to report any incidences of abuse without fear of reprisals, a system which ensures the anonymity of the complainants and addresses grievances in a timely and professional manner is crucial. This should be effectively communicated to the nuns and standardized across the country and accord full protection to the whistleblowers. The root, the root cause of incidences of sexual abuse of nuns by monks is the lax observance of the Vinaya by many monks in Bhutan. Hence, there is a pressing need for stricter enforcement of the Vinaya in Bhutan and elsewhere in the Himalayan region as well. As well. Some high officials try to dissuade the men author, that's me, from revealing sexual abuses of nuns in her doctoral dissertation in order to maintain the good name of the monastic institution and country in general, concealing information to suit the needs of certain sectors of society does not do justice to the nuns of this study. So in, con in conclusion, this study is not an exercise in male bashing or an attack on Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhism as might be misunderstood, especially by male, male clergy, but an effort to portray the heinous sexual abuses which continue to plague Himalayan women, including monastics. The Buddha himself challenged social norms for the betterment of women. If the situation of women has degraded in the name of Buddhism, then remedial measures are definitely in order. So lastly, uh, I would like to show my gratitude and great thanks to Sakya Dita International and Sakya Dita 2019 and Venerable Jason Palmo, as well as Venerable Karma Lekshit Somo, Venerable Eileen, Ms. Uh, Lean, Dr. Punam in Delhi, and organizing committee and dedicated volunteers for helping me so much to get my visa. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today without their help. My visa was rejected twice. <laughs> and finally, because of the help from all this, uh, Sakya Dita International, Sakya Dita Australia, Venerable, on the Venerable Tenzin Palm and all these, so I was, I'm here to be in front of you all to share my, some of my uh, knowledge at, on the nuns' ex exploitations on the sexual abuse. Thank you.